Welcome to another Unit Circle Survival Guide. Today we're going to talk briefly about radians and how we can use them to label a unit circle. So don't be intimidated by radians. You don't have to just memorize a bunch of weird looking fractions to slap onto the unit circle and just say that you have it memorized. If you understand what a radian is, then it will really help you be able to break this down and label in a, a nice and um, logical way. All right, so remember that we form an angle, two rays that share the same endpoint, and our unit circle, we're going to assume is centered on the origin, so right here, with the initial side in standard position on the positive part of the x-axis. And a radian is if you take the radius of your circle, that length, and wrap it around the circumference of your circle. So I'm just doing an estimate right here. It would be about like that. And that amount of rotation is equal to one radian. Okay, so just an estimate here. That amount of rotation is equal to one radian. And so what's really cool about radians, well, one of the things, is if you did that until you got to 180 degrees, so that would be one approximately another approximately here, you actually have pi radians in 180 degrees. So you would measure that out as 3.14, etc. radians. So we can go ahead and say there are pi radians of rotation in a half rotation of a circle. There are some websites with really neat illustrations of this, great explanations. I'll link to some of those in the video description. Um, so you can check those out if you're interested. But if you understand this and if you know that a half of a circle's rotation is pi radians, I think it makes it a lot easier to label using radians. Okay, so let's clear those off and let's get labeling. So we know if we don't rotate any, we have zero radians of rotation. And we already said if you do a half rotation, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Okay, so if you did so that was a half rotation. If you did a full rotation, well, that must be two pi radians of rotation. And once you know this, you really can just break this circle down in how much of two pi is this. So we already have half a rotation as pi. And so half of that, or a quarter rotation, must be half pi, or pi over two. All right, so I like to count zero, one pi over two, 2 pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 2. Okay, so then let's come back up to the first quadrant. We have that 90 degrees or a quarter rotation is pi over 2 radians of rotation. So we can think, well, half of pi over 2 is pi over 4, or 1 fourth pi. Once you know that, it's really easy to label all of the angles that have that same reference angle, pi over four. And remember, reference angle just means how much rotation to get back to the x-axis. So we label one pi over four, two pi over four reduces to pi over two, we already have that labeled, three pi over four, four pi over four is already labeled, it's pi. Then we have five pi over four, 6 pi over 4 is already labeled, it reduces to 3 pi over 2, and then 7 pi over 4. And of course, 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi. So that's not too bad. We've got a lot of it labeled. Okay, let's go back to the first quadrant again. And this time we're going to divide the first quadrant into three equal pieces so that we can label all of the angles that we have left. So we're breaking this down into three equal pieces. So really we're dividing pi over two by three, or that's the same thing as multiplying it by one third. So we know if we do one of these, a third of this rotation of pi over two, that's actually just going to be pi over six or one sixth pi. Okay, so we can count and I'll label all of these in green so you can see how we're counting. Okay, here are the pieces. So we have 1 sixth pi, 2 sixth pi, and that reduces to pi over 3. We have 3 sixth pi, already labeled as pi over 2, 4 sixth pi, 
which reduces to 2 pi over 3, 5 sixths pi, and 6 sixths pi, which is pi. So notice really if you looked at pi, you've broken it down into six equal pieces. So it makes sense that you would count by 1 sixth pi. And so continue that all the way around the circle. We have 7 sixths pi, or 7 pi over 6, 8 sixths pi, which reduces to 4 pi over 3, 9 sixths pi, 10 sixths pi, which reduces to 5 pi over 3, 11 sixths pi, and 12 sixths pi. So if you really look at these angles as pieces of a whole broken down, it makes it much easier to label and you don't have to mess around with memorization tricks. You just know with certainty you have them all broken down correctly. Hopefully this helped you get a good handle on how to label unit circle angles using radians. Check the video description. Like I said, if you're interested in seeing more about a radian and what it is, um, I'll also have links to how to label your unit circle using degrees, how to label a full unit circle, um, even some depth on why do we label certain coordinates the way we do. Um, so check that out, and thanks for watching.